Salam, salam. Yo, 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 guys. Welcome back again today. Today we have a special guest with us. We have a painter, somebody that does amazing art. I think her art is like super dope. So I had to get her on the YouTube channel. I appreciate her for coming. And today we have Wagata. Wagata, how are you? I'm good. That's Thank good. You for me. Thank you. Of course, of course. Thank you so much for coming on my YouTube channel. I appreciate this. I always try to like show people that there's other like people that are doing different types of like crafts and different fields. So like whether it be art or like the medical field, I'm trying to like incorporate more creativity and like just different views of life. So I appreciate you coming on uh, my YouTube channel. Thank you again. You're welcome. You're welcome. And so I want to ask you, where are you from and how does that affect the work that you do or, or your artwork in general? Mm. Well, um, I'll be starting with my name. My name is Wagahta Tahaye. I'm originally from Eritrea, born and raised in Asmara. Um, well, people call me Alba. They have the same meaning as Wagahta means dawn, the morning light. Um, I'm a self-taught painter based in Norway. Um, I'm a wife, a mommy to five years old princess, a daughter, and a sister. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm not creating my artwork, I work as a medical secretary, secretary or I work as a nurse in a medical center. And I work also as a French teacher. I incorporate acrylic bright colors, mandala details, and traditional clothing prints in my artwork to show the vibrancy of my culture. No, no, I really, I really like that too, because, uh, yeah, like the vibrant colors, that's one thing that I noticed when I first saw it. And then obviously like the very unique, uh, part of Africa. So who are like your biggest, uh, artistic influences? I know a lot of people have like influences from other places. Like who are your, some of your biggest ones that you have? Well, so far, um, I would say like, I grew up in a very supportive family, um, my entire life. Especially um, my big sister, her, her name is Hermon. She was the reason I am who I am today. She saw the talent that I couldn't see and feel myself, you know? Mm. So she truly believed in on me. So when I started sketching when I was around like three, four years old, mm -hmm. so she was the one like who was um, pushing me forward. So when I got a little bit older, she used to take me to um, art exhibitions and competitions where they, where they throw out like every year in a festival. So um, I would say like being surrounded by art almost every day, it made me feel that art is woven into my fiber of my being. So That's she, really my family are my biggest influences in my art life. That's really amazing uh, because it's very rare that I actually hear people that talk about things that they love. Like I, I've noticed that it's it's been <laughs> quite some time since I meet like people to where it's like, I, I feel like it's too big of a gap where I meet people that are truly passionate about something. Like I have a lot of passions too and hobbies. And so it's really dope to see that you, like that progression of that story. And actually that somebody in your family, like family took you serious enough and saw that you liked something and then they like pushed it along because a lot of times in families they don't do that they just like they 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 see you know your older brother your older sister or your parents they're like this is what i want you to do and if you don't do this then like <laughs> you might be a failure you know <laughs> so th this is this is actually proof that in a lot of cases not all but in most cases if you push a a, a kid or a young person from young age to do something like they at the bare minimal will do it and find love in something in this life, which is the ultimate goal. I think as a human being is to find things that you love, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I love that. That's, I appreciate you sharing that with me. You know what I'm saying? Now tell me about in painting or in art, like what is your favorite medium? If that makes sense. I hope I'm even saying that right. Cause I'm not an artist. <laughs> it totally makes sense. Um, but you know what? It depends on, on which work I'm working on. If um, if it's realistic work or if it's like a portrait commission artwork, I would go with oil because it gives me like more time so that I can come back like after maybe two, three, four days so that I can like continue with the blending. And then if I messed up and I can like make some arrangements, like it gives me like more time. 
it, it makes you flexible, right? But um, usually I, my comfort zone is acrylic because it dries so fast and, and I'm not that patient. So I'm working with my patients. You know? <laughs> so, um, my comfort zone is acrylic, but I'm working on, and I'm trying like new things every day. So those are my favorite. No, that's really interesting. You said that, um, yeah, the patience, that's, that's a virtue, you know, you got to work on that like over time, but also, one thing is too, because I, I actually used to paint a little bit and I'm trying to get back into it. I actually uh, am going to order probably in like the next week or two. I want to order like an easel and like, you know, I'm a beginner. I'm not used. So I don't even know what I'm saying. I just like an easel. I'm trying to order like uh, paint stuff, you know, like the whole kit or whatever, where you paint in different brushes. But one mm -hmm. thing that I'm really interested in is it's interesting you said oil and acrylic. But one thing that I'm very interested in, and I just want to know quickly if you're interested in this too, is watercolors. Like, what do you think about watercolor? I mean, like, is that even the right, am I even saying it right? Like watercolor painting? Watercolors, yeah, for sure. Well, that thing, like, I mean, I used to use that like ages ago when I was like a kid. Mm. That's my base, that was my start. Like, I used to use it more often. Acrylic and oil, actually oil, I started using it in 2020, 2020. Awesome. Like most, most recently, yeah. Uh, but acrylic, it was in 2016. Uh, Her colors was from the age of like five to six. Okay, so I'm a baby. Like I'm trying to paint like a baby. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> Word. Well, I appreciate that though. But it, I think it would be dope. Like I, w I would love to in the future mix mediums as far as like maybe like the the surrounding watercolors and then the main picture like acrylic or you know whatever that might be i don't even know if that's possible but i'm pretty sure it is but okay well since you're such a pro at like you know what kind of medium you like to to pick to use the paint like what is your favorite time in the day to create is it in the morning or is it in the, the midday in the afternoon at night um i'm a night owl so i would go with night time mm. so um it depends like when I'm, if it's a new project or a new creative, a new creation, I would do it in the, in the nighttime because I need some quiet and peaceful time. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I had to do it like without, you know, uh, but if it's in the daytime, you know, I have a five years old toddler. So she uh, would come up and, you know, was a kid, it doesn't, it doesn't end up well. Right. <laughs> So if it's a new creation, I would go in the nighttime when she's asleep. Um, but I would also like love her to join me in my process. So um, after creating it in the nighttime, when I'm doing like the process, somehow like I try to involve her as much as she's interested. And in. yeah, that's really that's really dope. I, I like that. I agree with you. I'm more of a night owl too. Um, I've made myself into a morning person, but obviously like from creator to creator, you paint, I like create content, but it's one of those things where it's like, okay, I'm sort of kind of forced to do things in the daytime, but like, it, like naturally it would probably be better to do it like later into the evening and night. That's like when I have like my most energy, you know? So now I agree. And that's actually dope that you incorporate your daughter into it. Like you said, as much as she will allow, or as much as like, she's into it because yeah. you know, that could be something that maybe she even starts from maybe even an earlier age than you or you know like you basically push her to be like hey like exactly this is painting who knows like she could be who the knows? next she could be the next famous painter who knows you know she could be yeah we never know so that's why like i want her to see the process and like every detail when i'm like enjoying it so i want her to feel that vibrance you know definitely 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 so like how would you describe or how do you think that art is important to society? It is important, um, like for so many reasons. And um, I believe like um, art promotes communication between cultures. Um, as we know, it is a universal language. So it can break cultural barriers and it can give people respect for the for the beliefs and traditions of others. Yeah. Um, and it also can preserve history. Um, art can change people's opinion. It can preserve the true feeling of the culture.
culture. So it has a big impact on society, I believe. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think that art, like you said, I love that you said like it's a universal language because it is. And obviously, like, you know, sometimes you don't know exactly what the person's saying, but you can sort of kind of get the gist of what they're saying. It's almost like the rock arts in different parts of Africa where it's like, okay, ancient African people have left this art on a wall in a cave somewhere. And it's like, mm -hmm. okay, you don't know maybe exactly what they were trying to say, but it's like, you do know for sure that, okay, this was a man, this was a woman, they had like cattle, they were herding. So like, you're right. To some extent, there's always, just because we're humans in general, there's always that translation that can happen through art that might not be able to happen if the language is lost or you don't understand or whatever it is, you know? I'm glad you said that. What motivates you to create? Because for me, I get motivation from all around the world to create and I actually take different crafts and different hobbies and I see how they do things and I try to incorporate that into like whatever I'm into, which is cars, content creating. So I think like for me personally, I think a wide reference of hobbies is very important because you can gain ideas and take things from certain people and places and you can use it in your own uh, uh, crafts and hobbies. So yeah, what do you think or what motivates you to uh, create? Well, it's huge actually, like my motivations and inspirations, um, it comes usually from my surroundings. It might be a conversation with my family. It might be a situation in a workplace where they, where people come like in different, in different situation of life, you know, different ages. Um, it might be a music video or a movie, especially the traditional ones. Right. And <laughs> of course, my childhood, my roots, my tradition, and all that, it gives me like inspiration and a big motivation would be um, in nature for me. Mm. I love nature. Especially like um, if you're into like, you know, inventions, every mankind inventions nowadays, even like so many years ago, they, we, we copy God in so many ways. Of course. So the biggest artist I believe is God, like every colors, the texture, the deepness, and everything we see in the sunset and the flower and everything it gives me like i don't know a power or something so whenever i'm like i'm having um an artist blockage you know somehow <laughs> like, <laughs> i have everything but i'm like blocked yeah thing i do is like i go out in the nature i really love that you said that because for me nature is amazing too it's so amazing to me like sometimes when i think about how many people don't pay attention to like nature and just the small stuff or like you, you you notice this like how, how people get older a lot of times like older people will pay attention to the sunset and like the moon and the like the, your, their environment around them and for a lot of people it takes them time for them like to notice that once they get older when they're younger a lot of people they don't notice everything around them and for me i've always maybe because i'm artistic maybe because you're artistic is that i notice everything around me and i don't take it for granted like when you see a sunset that's beautiful on a summer night you know like now or like a fall night that's inspiration. Do you know how amazing that is? That's a whole star. Like you're seeing a whole star come up every day, every night that literally brings life to the world. And you see it every day. And you just look at it and be like, ah, oh, that's just the sun. Like it makes you warm every day. You can feel it every day. Like it's an amazing, it's a, it's a being in an entity that is a very powerful thing. The same way that we're as humans or animals that we exist, that thing exists too. So I'm just saying that like, all these translations, like as a human being, all these things that you see, whether it's the colors, grass, smell, touch, hear, all these different senses, those can bring you creativity because you're translating all these different uh, things in the universe, you know, and then you can uh, apply it to your hobby, you know? Yeah. So I, I agree, I agree. So how do you define success as an artist? Oh, that's a huge one. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I would say um, it's a huge um, topic, actually. But personally, um, I think success is not the key to happiness. Mm. But happiness is the key to success, right? Of course. And I personally think happiness comes from giving. Mm give something we get like peace of mind and then we feel that we have done something good so that gives us like a fulfilling happiness in the heart 
So um, being an artist and then being able to give a service through my art and then leave an impact mm. and so that I can um, inspire young ones and young beginner artists, that gives me like a success feeling beside the financial stability, of course. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, you always got to need that money, you know, like, <laughs> no, but I agree. I agree. I agree. Cause obviously we live in the modern world and you need, it, it takes uh, resources to make, to make things, you know, to create things. So yeah, no, I agree. But yeah, the happiness in the creativity and uh, just people's reaction and, and, and their interaction with your create, like your creations, that's an amazing thing for real. Like that really is an amazing thing. I, I The only thing that I can relate to that, I can relate with my YouTube channel, but I think even before I have my YouTube channel, what I can relate to that is building a nice sports car. I know that sounds crazy, but like there are also a lot of artists in that world too. And when you give the car to somebody or when they buy it or whatever the situation, when people just see it, that's like moving art, you know? And so that reaction of how people react to it is an amazing thing. The same way when they see one of your paintings and they react to it or they see it on their wall every day, they're like, this is a beautiful painting. It's making my surroundings more beautiful and, and, and more like cultural. So that's, yeah, that's a dope thing. That's a dope thing. So does art help you in any other areas of your life or? Um, it does actually, um, because we artists is like originally not only painters, but artists, they use their work or their music, if it's music, to show their to show people um, their own views, right? So being able to see um, different views through art, it helped me like broaden out my own perspectives and understand other points of view. So mm. it helps me like in a different way that I could never think of. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I also think that. Um when you're going through things in your life, when you're sad, you're mad, whatever it might be, art is a great way to, it's a great outlet. There's been times where I've been like really sad or frustrated. And then I was like, you know what, instead of like doing something bad, let me take it out on my art, which is like <laughs> crazy to say, but for you, it, 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 <laughs> yeah, for you, I was gonna say it's mad, it's for artists, like painters, it's mad easy. They just pull out the brush and they're just like, ah, that, nah, like they're just mad, you know, like that. <laughs> I would be dramatic, like old school, like on, you know, like some of the shows, the movies, but like they'll just take the brush out and be like, ah, that, nah, nah, like I'm mad. And for me, I can't really do that. You know, I can't take the camera and just like throw it and hit it because it will, it will break it. But you take, I'll try it out. yeah, 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 <laughs> exactly. But what you do is you, uh, you transfer that energy, you know? So like, instead of me going out here doing something bad or what I deem or what society deems bad, I'll take that negative energy and I'll be like, you know what, it's time to make a video. So like, go make a food video and transfer that energy into positive energy, you know? Something. Yeah. So, so nah, that's, I agree. I agree. So how, like, if for anybody watching and also you, but if, okay, if you could tell me, like, how do you develop your art skills in general? as like just anybody, like a common person, like if they never painted, like how could they develop their art skills? And then after that, if you could tell me, how did you develop your art skills? Mm -hmm. Well, I never went to any art classes or any art school. I am a self-taught. So um, as I've told you before, like I used to sketch just only with pencils. Mm. I wouldn't dare to do something with colors even. <laughs> later on like um if you want something truly and then you believed that you want to do it more with it mm -hmm. there is a way always of so course. i've been i've been watching like youtube tutorials and it helped me a lot mm. and then um everything i see like i had to practice it i had to redo it again and then that kind of helped me a lot mm -hmm. um, but then it was it was just only a hobby for some for some years. And then I developed my art into career by teaching myself new techniques like every day. Mm -hmm. I don't always do one, one thing, even though I know like my, my style right now. The worst thing in art is like, not the worst, but the difficult thing is like knowing your style. Yeah, yeah. That is the hardest part, but it comes eventually. But now, like I'm certain, what which art style is my 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 style, which is mm -hmm. the 
Coptic style or the ancient Egyptian or the Abyssinian art we call yes. as you can see right yeah that's that's kind of my style I I'm like very comfortable with that mm. but I just you know I don't even just um say oh that's my style so I'm just going to do that no of course I teach myself new techniques every day that helps me to develop it and then um I also do commission portrait works for customers that oh. also help me like to to take it to other step and make myself like you know a pro <laughs> right right <laughs> yeah, it gives you like, a huge responsibility like gotcha. people living on you and then asking you to do a family portrait or something so that gives you a chance to believe in yourself in, in other way I agree. I agree. So do you think that, and I love that you said it. So do you think that a person that is just starting out that wants to get into art, do you think that being repetitive, even when you fail is very important, like just constantly still trying every day, even if you're not good. And that will eventually, because repetition is probably one of the best teachers in life, you know, like just doing something over and over and over and over again. I mean, look, I'm not going to lie. Some people are just not going to get it. Like I've seen people, I have seen people that did things for like 40 years. I'm like, you're still not any better. You know, but maybe that's not their their craft or maybe that's not what they're supposed to do. But mm -hmm. majority of the people, I would say, if you constantly do things over and over and over, you're going to get better at it. Of course. Yeah, definitely. Give definitely. like more power and more confidence in what you're doing. So there is like there is this essay, right? Practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make you perfect, <laughs> but it makes you a better person. It makes you good at what you're doing. There's I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Well, I really appreciate you coming on today. I'm actually going to get one of your paintings. You know, I want to do like a, I want something, you know, I don't want something everybody else has. I want something very like unique, but I want it to be obviously like, you know, like Abyssinian. And I had a, like a view or I had a picture like when we was talking about like maybe a woman in a traditional dress from like one of the tribes or maybe even all of the different tribes right in the field and like one person is like picking food and another person's doing this. This is gonna be like a harder painting, I feel like. So we're gonna to have to talk about this, but so do you wanna tell them uh, like any new projects that you're about to work on and like your social medias, if you have a website, anything that you want the people to know about you? Yeah, I'm uh, like, I'm currently um, working a new piece and I do have like um, a website where people can purchase my artworks. It's in my um, Instagram bio. Uh, my Instagram bio is like, um, it's called, or my handle is Alba Sahaye. And uh, my website is albaart.org. Got you, got you, got you. And I'll definitely have uh, both of those links down in the comment section so you guys can check out her art. Go add her on Instagram for real. Get her followers up, you know, go buy art so she can do this full time because she's amazing. Like, I really would like to just see you do this full time, to be honest with you. So I think that that would be really dope. Guys, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, turn on the bell notification down there so you'll get all my videos. Add me on all social medias, which is Africa Network, which is Instagram, Twitter, SoundCloud, Snapchat, Facebook, TikTok, or Africa Network. Each one teach one. Always love each other. Always learn from each other. And yo, guys, until next time, once again, I appreciate you. Peace. One love.